Ah, uh, it's got wet. Mostly finished with our toilet. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning, Holly. What a bee. Big breakdown. It's a drill working there. Quite a chilly one this morning. I'm um, just feeding the calves here. They figured out where all the grub comes. Wiring in. Tati guys are in full force this morning. One of their self propelled machines has broken down though, so they're, they've taken a the trail out. Um, I'm not sure whether they've got the repair boy on it. Filled up with diesel before I get going. I need to put a wee bit of engine oil, it's just on the bottom end of where it should be. Everything was meant to be shifted out of this fuel bay by now, but last time we ordered diesel, uh, they filled up the wrong tank. So we're having to empty it again. Another winter job to do on the grubber here. See that crack there? Needing to brace this in some way. We already tried this extra bracket. You can see that it sits over the top, but it didn't really do anything. Just cracked again. Need to run something probably from there down to here, an angle like that, but just make sure it doesn't interfere with that grubber leg. So, I don't know. Winter job anyway. This gravity fed tank, honestly, you could push water uphill quicker than it comes out of there. Kev's putting on the sweeper brush this morning, and just some of the soil that's getting trailed up the yard from the tatty guys. Just going to go and clear the main road and uh, drive to the shop and the farm and whatnot. Fluid's all checked and topped up, so off to go grubbing now. You can see where they've done, so we're going to try and wipe out this bit today. And they've still got these tatties to lift, and then they're wiping out that far side. So they've not got many, probably only kind of 10 beds left over that side and then they'll come into this block and they should get everything all finished today. All going to plan. Just filled up a fuel. Says we're empty. Nice one, some electrical issues on this. Dunk's gonna come along out of the subsoil do the end rigs here. Cause these have been run on by the trailers full of tatty, so they're well packed in. So we'll fluff all this up and I'll go and start grubbing. I'll do the, the far edge on the end rig there and then I'll start taking a straight line. Just getting started here. The best thing about coming in behind the tatty guys is uh, there's hardly any stones because they obviously go through it with a D stone when they're planting the tatties and it's just, oh, no stones. See those green things, they're leaf springs just so they've got a bit of give. So when they hit a stone, the leg can come up a bit rather than uh, just breaking the leg or bending the leg the stone's not going to move. And then you've got the packer at the back. That's the one that's got a crack on it on the frame. We need to sort that. Dunk's nice stumps on and around the end rigs. It's just got big long legs on it with big shoes on the end of it which fluff up the soil. Quite a lot of volume going through the soil so it has to move and fluff up. The brush has improved the road. It's not the best at the moment. The brush needs replaced but it's definitely took off anything loose and free. You can see there's nothing left on that brush. Coos have really poached that corner. It's coming up fairly nice. There's a couple of wet bits you can see there and there's a bit I'm just coming to down at the bottom here. Don't know whether it's a pocket that drains aren't getting away or a low line bit, I'm not quite sure. But it's soggy. Tati guys, they finished the far away break and are now into this last break. There'll be quite a bit to do there. They should, they're hoping to get it all done to today. They've got quite a drive to the next field. Um, it'll probably be like two and a half, three hour drive in those machines. They only go 26 kilometers an hour on the road. Um, so they'll be wanting to get finished this tonight so they can either shift late tonight when the traffic's dead or really early in the morning when the traffic's dead. Right, so they're currently at the yard with one self-propelled, second self-repel that's broken down 
uh, one tractor and trailer, two tractors and trailer, three tractors and trailer, four tractor and trailer. There's another windrower up there. There's a tractor and trailer up there. There's a forklift in the yard. There'll be two or three, maybe even four tractors and trailers um, out on the road at the moment, taking tatties back to their yard and bringing them back. And then they've got two lorries, I think, going back and forward. And a self-propelled machine over there. No, a trailed machine over there. Because the tatty guys don't uh, put beds right in close to the telegraph poles, you get a lot of weed growth in, among, in amongst them, grass growth and weed growth. So I'm just trying to break it all up at the moment, but you can see kind of a lot wider spread. Normally a zero crop, you've just got a wee patch round about it, whereas this is quite a big, big patch. Just coming up lunch, I've been in this field for, I don't know, three and a half, four hours. Kev's tractor's ready to pick up, so Dad's away at the moment, so I'm just going to take this up to the yard, uh, give Kev a lift along the road to get his tractor and he's going to go and put the drill on so we can start putting in wheat behind here. Um, it's still to be disced, Dunk's going to put the disc on just once he's finished subsoiling. Um, kind of make that a wee bit finer soil, break it down a bit further and then the drill will come in. So some wheat, I'm not going to do loads of grubbing tonight um, just because it might rain and once it's opened up and it's sticky and wet we don't want it, don't want it to rain on it. So just enough to keep Kev going with the drill for today and maybe tomorrow morning. Doesn't look too good a pallet of water. <laughs> Let's squint. Picked up Kev's tractor but we need to get something done properly so that it, there's no interference between the hedge cutter and the tractor because the tractor's clearly got electrical faults somewhere. Um, they can't find them in terms of just scanning it and seeing for any codes or anything like that, so we'll need to do something. The guys are here to sort the roof to leak in there, that's why the cherry picker was here. Apparently they snapped the web on that, that's why it's broken down. Getting a wee shower there. Doug's now in the field with the discs, so that's just his first pass now. Kev's on the road to pick up the drill, he'll be about an hour, and then he'll get drilling just behind where it's been disced already. Just keep going. It's a bit damp and dreek and don't know if it's gonna to come to too much, hopefully not. Ah uh, it's got wet. <laughs> Abandoning ship here. A lot going on in this yard, the busiest it's ever been. Kev's up there with a the drill. It's well, he's changed some times on it and put it away. Coming up to have a look up here. We'll need to wait until it's heavy, heavy rain in there. But basically, they took off the flashing on the corners and along the apex and took them all off and resealed them. So hopefully that's solved the issue. Let's part the discs back on. New bolt. Hopefully it stays on. That's a bit annoying that rain stopped play. Three tractors that were about to be going all, all guns blazing are now all sitting doing nothing. We fixed the web on the other self-propelled so they'll get it going again. 
arrow tines on the drill, shut them in the scrap metal heap. Oh look at the yard, it's nice and guttery. Gonna park this up inside. Scraper off the drill broke, so this piece broke off of the kind of hanger. Um, this is what it's meant to look like. Um, so we took a new one, put it onto an old one, took the one that was worn down. You can see this bit's missing from this one. Just welded it on. Maybe put a brace across to there as well. Might as well try that before we replace. We don't have a spare piece of this. Might as well try this while we can. brace here. So weld that into there. This will just strut it a bit more, add a bit more strength and rigidity to it so it can't flex and kind of bend between, fold in a wee bit. Red hot, a bit, a bit wonky on this side, but that side came up really nice. Anyway, that should do the job. They look pretty identical to me. See how it lasts, Kev just putting it back on. Might work, might fall off immediately. Just picked up that wheel that I put in yesterday. I forgot to get it yesterday afternoon. It's off the flatbed trailer. As you can see, the rims are kind of past their best. Could probably do with a new set of rims all around, but anyway for now. Stewie the airfoil off a tractor. Stewie. All the, all the time we were drilling it was very dry so a lot of stewie kicking about. Once they finished with their toilet. What a mess. Another ammonia bale straw for the coos. That the guys have disappeared. Uh, they've taken one machine away. They one self propelled on to where they go next and then they've left a self propelled and I don't know if they've taken the trailed one away as well. They've only got a few hours left here, so they're wanting to get started elsewhere. This is a daily job, really. Squashing the cardboard. Got two bins, trying to do most of the cardboard and then all the plastic cans and all that in there. Although they, they both take each. More cardboard. This is all from the butchery. to get spuds for tea but I'll just nick a couple in here. Don't save the time. A Veritron 220 platinum. Whatever that means. The only thing a two I know what means is two row. Two bed. To be fair in terms of big pieces of kit and how they look, that does look cool. You walk by my side. 